Well, let's look at the Aston by-election. That result at the weekend. Labor overturning 100 years of history. Let's go live to Victoria now. The Infrastructure Minister and member for Ballarat joins us now, Catherine King. Thanks so much for your time. Um, it's probably hard to resist gloating this morning, but what is your outtake from the Aston by-election result? Well, it's certainly a historic result, and I think um, you know we are really looking forward to welcoming Mary Doyle into the ranks of the Federal Parliamentary Labor Party. I think she'll be a terrific representative for the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. I think she ran an incredible campaign. You know, she in the general election had a significant swing to her, and then to have delivered this result is a real testament, I think, to her and her team. But I think also is that you know, people are tired of conflict politics and they want to see someone who's there, uh, who represents them, who wants to uh, really uh, make yeah. sure that we're delivering for people in our suburbs. And Mary certainly uh, ran a really positive campaign to be able to do that. Yeah, fair enough. You talk about conflict politics and a, a nicer, kinder a politic. That's something you talked about, the general election campaign. Well, how do you marry that up with the extremely negative ad campaigns that were run by Labor, essentially making you know Peter Dutton look like a monster in some of these adverts? Well, I see, hear some of the commentary about that. My sister-in-law lives in Aston and she was sending me through some of the material that was coming both on through Facebook and on her letterbox from the Liberal Party, particularly around uh, some decisions around road funding that I had made. She sent them through particularly to me. So I don't think the Liberal Party can claim uh, that uh, they ran a positive campaign, given oh, the material that I Oh, absolutely not, saw, Catherine King. No, no, I don't think by any yeah. means they ran a positive campaign, but I'm, uh, I, I can't think that Labor can say, hand on heart, that they ran a completely clean campaign either? Well, I think that it's important for us to have been able to point out really clearly to people that after a decade in office of the Liberal Party having delivered very little for this area, mm. uh, that for the men to claim that they had no solutions and that they, weren't gonna, they were going to continue to be part of the problem, uh, really with their voting no against every attempt that we've made to deal with issues of inflation, okay. to deal with uh, energy relief, to deal with housing affordability, uh, I think that's pretty reasonable for us to point out the sort of political party uh, that is in opposition today. Mm. And I think that negativity and pointing out that negativity, I think, on behalf of the Liberal National Party, I think really uh, did play pretty strongly in Aston. People want to see yeah. an opposition who, you know, frankly, uh, has had a toxic relationship with the Victorian state government and seems set to continue that. Part of the problem we've got when we're trying to deliver uh, infrastructure, when we're trying to deliver uh, relief to people, is that mm. we actually need an opposition who's in people's corner uh, not in their own corner, and that's what we're saying, unfortunately, and the people of Aston have voted against that. Yeah, I mean, Labor is, is right to take a bit of a confidence boost out of this, absolutely, but do you see this result as any endorsement of any particular <laughs> policy? The Voice, for example, where you are on energy policy, could Labor even look at this result and say, you know what, we have the people's support, let's scrap Stage 3 tax cuts? I think that what this result really clearly shows is that the positive agenda that we both took to the general election and are now implementing in government are getting on with the business of governing, governing explaining to people where, you know, the issues that are complex and hard, explaining that to people, taking people along the journey of what we're trying to do about inflation, what we're trying to do to actually take that pressure off households, uh, what we're trying to do to implement, house, you know, the Housing Australia Future Fund, uh, what we're doing with energy relief and taking people with us and having that agenda and explaining it. I think that is what it certainly uh, clearly said, but also that really strong notion, which was clear in the general election as well, that this is is about representational politics. People want to know that they've got a representative who understands them, is in their corner and is mm. going to be part of a delink, part of a team. But Rochelle Campbell going to try to is a very issues. accomplished woman, isn't she? I mean, she was she was all well, those I'm, things, I'm, essentially. 
I'm, I'm sure sure she is. I don't know her at, at myself, but I'm sure she is, and I'm sure at some point she'll run for the Liberal Party uh, as well. But it was pretty clear, I think, from this election result that really what people are after is understanding, you know, what mm. the agendas are, what we're trying to do about them, and having a positive plan to actually try and look at uh, getting uh, energy relief, looking at the issues around housing, housing affordability, yeah. and tackling those, as well as having a strong local representative, which we do have in Mary Doyle. And I think, mm. again, having uh, the Prime Minister uh, so strongly uh, backing, backing her, being in the seat a number of times as well, was certainly a positive for her campaign. Well, Catherine King, great to have you on the program. It's not every day we go live to Ballarat, but happy to say we did it this morning. Thanks so much. We got there in the end. Thank you. <laughs>